Hello, kia ora, I'm Philip Duncan with your February Climate Watch update. Can you believe January's gone already? So this month, La Nina is still with us and it's likely to fade away as we go on towards autumn. But around the New Zealand area, La Nina's weather patterns haven't been very dominant this summer, i.e. we haven't had a lot of rain and the humidity levels actually haven't been too tough. But I think you'll find over the next week or two, at least the first half of February, that looks like it's about to change. If we kick off with the animated uh, wind map, and this shows where low pressure and high pressure is. High pressure in the brighter whites and yellows, and low pressure everywhere else. So there is a lot of low pressure up here in the tropics, with two or three low pressure zones spinning away, and that energy is going to continue on for the next couple more weeks, driving down rainmakers not only into New Zealand, but also many parts of northern and eastern Australia. So let's get into it. And we kick off with Australia, the Bureau of Meteorology over there, who we trust the most for the La Nina forecasts. They are still saying we're in La Nina, but when you take a look at the average of international models, here we are in February, right on the borderline of La Nina, going back to neutral. That means that the sea surface temperatures are getting gradually back to where they should be. But look, over the next wee while, there isn't a great deal of change. It's not like there's an extreme swing back to normal. It just gradually in April pulls back to neutral and even more so around June, which means really the weather pattern we've seen over the last few months is likely to continue on. Just a quick reminder what La Nina does. It blows a lot more easterlies across the Pacific Ocean, so it becomes cooler than average on the top of the sea over on the eastern Pacific, but on our side of the world the sea temperatures lift up and that creates more rainmakers. So speaking of the warmer sea surface temperatures, the Moana project, which Met Service and Met Ocean are part of, uh, showing sea surface temperatures up here well into the 20s. So that's the reason why if you're going for a swim around the North Island at the moment, it's pretty warm all the way down to about Christchurch. But look how different, <laughs> different it is between Christchurch and uh, Dunedin, for example. If you're taking a swim, the difference is somewhere in the teens to dropping down more towards that 12, 13, 14 degree mark. So from the mid to late teens to the lower teens as you drop down the South Island. But the map I'm standing in front of might be a little bit more important. This shows the difference between the, the forecast temperatures coming up and what has historically been recorded. So in other words, these areas up here are putting it more towards a marine heat wave. And you're certainly seeing around the North Island, it is leaning warmer than average. We've seen extreme marine heat waves around Wider Upper in the past month. Most of the country leaning a bit warmer, although just once again, it looks like the Otago area is the one part of New Zealand where the marine conditions are not leaning that much warmer than average. Check out the Moana project if you want to see more of those maps. Now, let's go to the Niwa map, the soil moisture maps. Now, this is going to change dramatically because this is how it was for the start of the month, the 1st of February. These areas in red, much drier than they should be, basically going into drought. So the very heavy rain event coming in right now, as we're recording this, is going to completely reverse what you see there on the west coast. But it might not reverse it much for Stewart Island or Southland. They've got a dry couple of weeks ahead, as you're about to see. And eventually, we hope in the first to second week of February, some relief coming into the North Island. So let's try and make sense of all of what I'm just talking about. So we've got two different weather patterns at the moment. You've got the La Nina one you see in the yellow arrows. It produces weather that comes down from the tropics um, anywhere like this down towards New Zealand. The other one is the usual roaring 40s, windy westerlies that we're seeing in the purple arrows. And that's what we've been seeing so far this summer. That's why we saw a frost in Southland at the very end of January, because a cold southerly came out of the Southern Ocean. Nothing at all to do with La Nina. So in New Zealand, we get a bit of both weather patterns. So what weather pattern is going to dominate as we go through the month of February? Well, let's take a look. Here's week one. And we show, once again, the high pressure zones and red boxes, low pressure, in blue. So what a difference this low has made coming into the very first week of February. It has pushed away the high pressure zones, keeping this one out south of Aussie and clearing this one out east of the Chatham Islands. And that encourages a humid airflow that comes down right across the country. So for the first week, this is just showing day one, but for the first week, that low pressure zone, this box here, will be moving slowly across New Zealand, bringing more rain in and more humidity as well. Although there will be a bit of a cooler southerly this weekend for the South Island. As we go into week two, 
You can actually see that southerly still lingering around the, the middle of next week as we get into week two. Uh, that southerly change will be a little bit cooler around the South Island and with the high pressure parked out here expanding in, the weather's going to settle down. But low pressure remains up here in the tropics, two big low pressure zones. This one has the potential to be a cyclone or at least a, a tropical low that could bring in some wind and rain. And with the high pressure down to the south, that encourages easterlies for the North Island. So another chance of rain um, as we go through the next week. So that's the good news because the North Island desperately needs some rain. If we get it now, we probably won't be talking about droughts. But if we miss out on this rain, I think some Western areas may well be talking about drought. So I think the rain will come in and help. But uh, either way, as we go into the second week, there's still a lot of tropical energy to the north. But it does fade away as we go through to the third week. So as we get, get towards sort of the mid to later part of February, these lows up here are falling apart. There might be one weak low pressure zone here. It's so small that uh, I would say it's a 50-50 setup. So what we're really seeing dominating is this high pressure belt returning again. And once more, focused over the South Island. That's the big change we've seen this summer to the last three or four summers. We're seeing high pressure zones dropping southwards. They're not up here so much, which means that the tropics has a better chance of coming down. So that's really how February is shaping up, wet to begin with, and then may well start to dry out later on. So let's drill down on the rainfall data. This is the departure from normal rainfall map. And what it shows is the areas in blue lean wetter than average, wetter than usually recorded at this time of the year. So as you can see, plenty of rain for the South Island and the North Island as well. But check out the very south, you're drier than usual still. There might only be five millimeters coming for Southland over the next couple of weeks. This is the first week and it shows you that that La Nina rain is coming our way. Or just one last thing, there's also some very dry weather just to the north. So I just want to say, be a little bit cautious in the very northeast of the North Island. You're right next to dry weather. There's some chance those rainfall totals might not be as big in saying that if the dark blue comes through, you've got a chance of flooding. So let's take a look at the rainfall for the next two weeks. This takes us right through to February 17. And look at New Zealand. We are on the scale at the highest end. 100 to 300 millimetres, although in this area here we know it could be several hundred millimetres. So there's a lot of rain coming down, a lot of rainfall potential. But down here there's this little pale blue. And if you see blue that's next to green, it's at the lower end of the scale. That's the trick. So if you see, because there are two blues, obviously one at the low end and the other at the high end. So this lower right blue down here next to the green showing just five millimetres or so, five to ten coming through for some parts of Southland and Stewart Island. So that high pressure bubble remains, but I am quite hopeful that the rest of the country gets some decent rain. The only caveat, we've got high pressure just here as well. So very, very dry. So a fine line between almost completely dry for two weeks and 300 millimeters of rain there and a couple of hundred millimeters of rain there. So that high pressure bubble does matter quite a bit. Just a, a close-up version of that map that we just showed you shows that rainfall around, you know, Hawke's Bay, central parts, Waikato, Auckland, Northland, Bay of Plenty, Taranaki, all of those areas getting a deluge. And even the central areas, the purple is still showing 100 millimetres. Now, if this is wrong, you know, by 50 millimetres, say, let's say it's 50 millimetres out, there's still a chance of 50 millimetres coming. So that's not bad in the middle of summer, but you really can see Southland and Otago are on the outer edges of this rain. So you may not get very much down there in southern parts of New Zealand. Let's take a look at the temperatures. Departure from normal in February. Once again, New Zealand's all yellow. And to prove that it's not broken, you can see that it does change colors <laughs> when you show a bigger area of land. So just like uh, Tasmania, we're leaning about half a degree to one degree above average for the month of February. And when we expand that out to February, March and April, New Zealand again in this zone of about one degree above average, as we've seen month after month for the last three or four years. But over in Australia, you get inland to New South Wales and Queensland, and it's the other way around. You're about half a degree or more below where you should be at this time of the year. So that is all from me the February outlook. And like I say, it's all about the tropics for the start of this month, humidity coming down, um, facial eczema is going to be an issue for farmers dealing with that, especially around places like Waikato where the weather's been so dry, the grass has died off, 
Now we're in for some rain, followed by some very high humidity. So that could just be a perfect recipe for facial eczema as well. That is all from me for this month. I will see you again with our next Climate Watch update brought to you in association with ruralweather.co.nz and our business partners at IBM. We'll see you again at the end of this month, start of March.